please arise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <coughs> Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord.
only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, Heart most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. and most merciful God of thy bountiful goodness keep us we beseech thee from all things that may hurt us that we being ready both in body and soul may cheerfully accomplish those things that thou wouldst, ha wouldst have done through Jesus Christ thy son our Lord who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever one God world without end The Old Testament lesson appointed for this, the first Sunday following Michaelmas, is recorded for us in the, in the prophecy given through St. Isaiah, chapter 44, verses 21 through 23. The Lord prophesied, saying, Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower part of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest and every tree in it. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Here ends the lesson. We chant together Psalm 61 as printed in the bulletin.
So I will sing praise to your name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be. epistle appointed for this day is recorded for us in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians chapter 4 verses 22 through 28. Brethren, put off concerning your former conduct the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Therefore, Putting away lying, let each one of you speak truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. Let him who stole steal no longer, but rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Here ends the epistle. for the reading of the Holy Gospel recorded for us in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning in chapter 9 at the first verse. At that time, Jesus got into a boat, crossed over, and came to his own city. Then behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer. Your sins are forgiven you. And at once, some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Then he said to the paralytic, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitudes saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. Here ends the Holy Gospel. <clears throat> Today we confess the Holy Christian faith that we have just heard according to the words of the Apostles' Creed as printed at the top of page 12 in the front of the hymnal, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from 
from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
dear fellow redeemed by the blood of the spotless Lamb of God, who has brought to us forgiveness and life in the midst of sorrow and death. Grace, mercy, and peace are yours in abundance from God, our Heavenly Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The words on which we meditate this morning are the words of the Old Testament lesson here once again, Isaiah chapter 44, verses 21 through 23. Remember these, O Jacob and Israel, for you are my servant. I have formed you. You are my servant, O Israel. You will not be forgotten by me. I have blotted out like a thick cloud your transgressions, and like a cloud your sins. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord has done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains, O forest and every tree in it, for the Lord has redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, make us holy in the truth. Your word is truth. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> I have blotted out like a thick cloud your sins. Uh, God prophesied through Isaiah. And waking up this morning, uh, it was a bit amusing to me at how much the weather this morning was very much in line with this prophecy from Isaiah. I don't know about where you live, but where I live, the fog was really remarkably thick this morning. What God is saying is that he doesn't see our sins. He has covered them over, blotted them out. This image comes up again and again in the scriptures uh, that God does not see our sins. He's blotted them out. He's, he's scribbled them out in the ledger of his record of rights and wrongs, the debts that we owe him. He's, he's scribbled it out. He's dumped the ink on it and can no longer read it. He's covered it over with the blood of the Lamb of God so that looking down from heaven, he does not see the law which we have broken, but the blood of the sacrifice for our sins. He has clothed each and every one of us through the waters of baptism. He has clothed us with, with the righteousness of Christ so he does not see the sinner beneath the robe of Christ, but sees the righteousness of Christ, which covers you over. Remember these things. Isaiah said, remember them. I will never forget you, God says. The words preceding and the words following. When God says to his church, remember these things, is he talking about the things that came before or the things that follow? And, and as is so often the case in the scriptures, the best answer to that question is yes. The things that precede our text, God, through Isaiah, talks about people cutting down a tree and using part of it to stoke their fire and warm themselves and use the coals to bake their bread. And then they take another part of it and they carve an image and they bow down to it and, and pray to it as if it can do anything for them. And they don't get it that the very thing that they have power over can't help them. It's putty in their hands. They are not putty in its hands. So to call out to that <clears throat> doesn't do any good at all. In our day, maybe it's a little easier for us to think in terms of our bank accounts. You work and get paid for your work. You do what you choose to do with your money, whether it's put it in the bank and get you know, one half of 1% interest or in the stock market and you know, make that supposed 10% a year or lose it all or even lose it all and then some, depending how you're investing. You choose what to do it. You have power over your money. It doesn't save you. Don't put your trust in that. Governments of the people, by the people, for the people. Government which you elected to be your instrument. 
you need government. Government should be helpful to you. But it's not the ultimate thing. Governments rise and fall for various reasons. Nations rise and fall for various reasons. Pray to the government, despite what some in an election or two ago for our president, where they declared a certain candidate to be Messiah. And trust me, they were quite serious about that in their framework of thought. They understood him to literally be Messiah for them. Um, how'd that go? I mean, a sober-minded judgment, it, kind of like, seriously? Somebody that you cast a vote for, you understand to be your Messiah? Remember these things, God says. Think about it, think clearly. These are not gods. Don't worship creation, including don't worship yourself. Well, I want and I believe. That's true for me. Don't worship that. Worship the one who created you. Pray to him. Remember these things. I have blotted out like a thick cloud, I have blotted out your transgressions. Sing, O oh heavens, the deeps, every tree in the forest. Why? Because God has done it. How do you know? In the gospel lesson, how do you know the man's sins were forgiven? Well, healing is possible because sin has been forgiven. Otherwise, healing would not be possible. You will rise from the dead. Every human being will rise from the dead. Why? Because sin has been blotted out. It's been paid for. Jesus rose from the dead. This is true. This is, do the research, weigh the evidence. This is verifiably true. Beyond reasonable doubt, it is true. Okay? He rose. Creation rejoices. It breaks forth in song because God has performed it. Our Savior rose from the dead. Pray to him. Return to him. And that's what God says through Isaiah. Remember these things and return to me because I will not forget you. I took care of the big problem. I blotted out your sins. So Jesus dealt with something in his day that we struggle with down to our very own day. Anti-clericalism is probably the term we usually throw at it. But this idea that a man can forgive somebody's sins, who does he think he is? That's what they were thinking about Jesus. He's blaspheming. How dare he? Who does he think he is? Nobody can forgive sins except God alone. And I don't know about you, but if I were the man or, or the ones bringing the man, don't we just naturally think in terms of creation instead of the creator, the material instead of the spiritual? They dig through the roof to drop this man in front of Jesus. He doesn't say, get up and walk. He says, cheer up. When he saw their faith, which probably says something about them over against me and anybody who thinks like me that, you know, why didn't he heal him physically? Because we have trouble seeing the importance of the spiritual and how the material follows after the spiritual. You fix the spiritual problem, the material problem will follow. It may take a while, but it will follow. Everybody will rise from the dead because sin is forgiven. When he saw their faith, they went through a lot of effort to get that man to Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said to the man, cheer up. Cheer up. Yeah, you're lying on a bed. Yeah, you're crippled. Yeah, you got to be carried around. They don't even have curbs with wheelchair ramps in your city, let alone probably even wheelchairs to get you around. you got to be carried by others. God help you if you don't have friends. Cheer up. 
in the face of suffering. Cheer up in the face of weakness and decay. Cheer up. Why? Well, your sins are forgiven, of course. How are you doing? As you look at the world, is everything you experience an excuse to complain? Is everything that bad? Is it so horrible that you woke up this morning because your body aches, your neck is stiff, you roll out of bed onto hands and feet and work your way up from there? Is life so horrible because you have to go to work again, or school again, or deal with the coworker again, or the general public again, or a boss who's annoying, or employees who just don't do what they're told again? Or, or are you filled with joy? Because your sins are forgiven. And waking up in the morning means that God has given you one more day that he trusts in your hands to glorify him, to give thanks to him because he has done it. He blotted out your transgressions like a thick cloud. He does not see them anymore. Instead, he views you as his dear child. The people you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, are they an opportunity for whining and complaining or a, an opportunity to rejoice that God would put people around you so that you're not alone, would put people around you that you can rejoice with and encourage and tell about the beautiful things that God does, does in the present tense. The taxes that you pay so that you have a government that provides a circumstance in a country for you where you still get to participate in choosing your leaders, where you go about your daily business really honestly, not afraid that you're going to be killed today. If you are afraid of those things, please come talk to me. The odds of such things, I know what we read in the news. I know, and I know it's not good. I'm not suggesting it's good. But honestly, you are so safe in your country, so safe. The taxes that you pay so that you have roads to drive on, so that your neighbors who fall on to hard times might have food, clothing, and shelter at a minimum, that you have lights on your streets when you're walking in the rain so that cars might see you because you're so foolish that you wear gray and black. I, honestly, everybody in the Pacific Northwest, why do we wear gray and black? In the rain and the dark so much of the year? instead of reflective clothing, and our taxes pay for the streetlights, and the parks, and the libraries, and on, and on, and on, we have it very good. Rejoice. Cheer up. The worst possible thing that could ever happen to you does not have to happen to you. The very worst thing that could ever happen to you is that you suffer eternally in hell, separated from a merciful God, suffering his wrath because you look to something created rather than to the creator. That would be the worst thing that could happen to you. And God says, remember these things. Those don't help you. I have done it. I'm not going to forget you. When you connect with your forgiveness, the more you connect with your forgiveness, the more reason you have to rejoice, even, even in the midst of suffering, even in the midst of difficulty, even in the midst of annoyances that seem so intolerable, the worst thing that could happen to you is taken off of the table for you. And everything becomes an opportunity to glorify your Savior to give thanks to him, to rejoice. Jesus said to the man, pick up your bed and walk. You, go be a witness in front of them of the joy that we have because our sins are forgiven. Kick up your heels, pick up your bed, enjoy, not because it's a burden, but because you couldn't, and now you can so it is with you. If your sins were not forgiven, nothing you did would accomplish much of anything. Everything 
would be absolute futility, all of it. But because your sins are forgiven, those things which were futile now have purpose. Those things which were a burden now are a joy, including the things of God's law. Don't lie. Don't deceive. Oh, what a burden. No. It's a joy. You're free to do these things now. Do not hurt nor harm your neighbor in his body. Yes, but. Oh, you can bear the burden because you're a child of life and you've been freed from the bonds. Honor your father and your mother. Yes, but they're so demanding. Yes, and in Christ, you get to rejoice and honor them because you're free to do so. You don't have to in order to be good enough for God. You are good enough for God. You can do this in gratitude and thanks. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. How, how could you not? How could you not? Here is the God who saves us. He saved. Jesus came, died on the cross for your sins. He saved you. He saves you in the here and now because he has given that authority to human beings to forgive sins so that you can come and say, I have sinned, and here, your sin has also been put away from you. You are forgiven. And he will save. Christ will return and take you away from all of the temptations, all of the frustrations, all of the burdens. Just ask that you be patient. And in order to be patient, he grants you the ability to rejoice in the face of suffering, knowing that the victory has been handed to you on a silver platter. It's yours. It's been accomplished. Rejoice. Pick up your bed and walk. You have been healed. And any physical ailments and any difficulties in this life that we face are coming to an end. The cure is already at work. The medicine is working. And our Savior will come and raise all the dead and those who have looked to him for all that is good. They will have eternal life. And every sorrow, every burden, every tear, every disappointment will be gone. And all that will be left will be the happiness forever. And that happiness is already ours because God has done it. He has blotted out our sins. Amen. Please arise. <coughs> and now the peace of God, which goes beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. and everlasting God, who art worthy to be had in reverence by all the children of men. We give thee most humble and hearty thanks for the innumerable blessings, both temporal and spiritual, which without any merit or worthiness on our part thou hast bestowed upon us. 
We praise thee especially that thou hast preserved unto us in their purity thy saving word and the sacred ordinances of thy house. And we beseech thee, O Lord, to preserve and extend thy kingdom of grace and grant unto thy holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and faithful pastors who shall preach thy word with power and help all who hear rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send forth laborers into thy harvest and open the door of faith unto all the heathen and unto the people of Israel. In mercy, remember the enemies of thy church and grant unto them repentance unto life. Be thou the protector and defender of thy people in all time of tribulation and danger. May we, in communion with thy church and in brotherly unity with all our fellow Christians, fight the good fight of faith and in the end receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow thy grace upon all the nations of the earth. Especially do we entreat thee to bless our land and all its inhabitants and all who are in authority. Cause thy glory to dwell among us and let mercy and truth, righteousness and peace everywhere prevail. To this end, we commend to thy care all our schools and pray thee to make them nurseries of useful knowledge and Christian virtues, that they may bring forth the wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamities by fire and water, war and pestilence, scarcity and famine. Protect and prosper everyone in his appropriate calling and cause all useful arts to flourish among us. Be thou the God and father of the widow and the fatherless children, the helper of the sick and the needy, and the comforter of the forsaken and distressed. Accept, we beseech thee, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, <clears throat> our talents and powers together with the offerings we bring before thee, which is our reasonable service. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we pray that you would continue to bless your servant, David Hockenberry, as he mourns the passing of his mother and after these many months, that you would grant him peace and that you would comfort your faithful departed and hasten the consummation of their bliss. Grant him always joy in the remembrance of all that his mother Joyce has done for him and that he may always respect her name and speak well of her. And as we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and godly life to prepare for the world to come, <clears throat> doing the work thou hast given us to do, while it is day before the night cometh when no man can work, and when our last hour shall come, support us by thy power, and receive us into thine everlasting kingdom, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and <clears throat> in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb which was offered for us and hath taken away the sins of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again hath restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and singing.
pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
let us arise. Lord, lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee 